Did you know that coral reefs glow? They biofluoresce. In fact, many things around us biofluoresce, including us. It's just another way of making light, but unfortunately for us, we often can't see it with the naked eye. We need special lights and filters. So I learned about marine biofluorescence about a decade ago. And when I learned about it, I became obsessed. I wanted to know everything I possibly could about the functionality of fluorescence within coral. But of all the questions that I had, my one central question was, can fluorescence help save coral reefs? Coral are in trouble. We've lost about 50% of our reefs globally. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change predicted that reefs would be functionally extinct by 2050. After the longest lasting and most devastating bleaching event that we had from 2014 to 2016, they changed that prediction to 2030. There are researchers who think that coral will be functionally extinct within the decade. So why do we care? What does it mean to us? Well, coral are one of the most, if not the most, biodiverse habitats on the planet. They make up 0.1% of the ocean, yet they are home to 25% of all marine life. 30% of every identified fish species lives on a reef at some point in its life cycle. All those little nooks in the crannies of the reef provide hiding spots. They allow little fish to be protected so that they can grow up to be big fish. The value of reefs are almost incalculable. I've heard anything from 800 billion to 16 trillion. That value comes from those fish that grow, go from little fish to big fish. We like to catch them in commercial fisheries. 40% of our planet relies on the ocean as their main source of protein. We also derive medications from coral reefs. Tourism, people travel from all over the world to scuba dive on a reef or snorkel or just lay in the sand beside a reef. And the thing we often don't think about is the physical protection that corals provide us. Coral are comprised of a hard calcium carbonate uh, skeleton that builds on itself over millions of years. It's very hard, it's very strong. With climate change, we're seeing bigger and bigger storms out at sea, and they're happening more closely together. These storms make a lot of energy, and that energy has to go somewhere. So that wave energy will start traveling towards a shoreline. Well, if it hits a nice, hard, healthy reef first, that reef will absorb up to 97% of that energy before it hits our shoreline, causing flooding and erosion. I don't believe that coral will be functionally extinct in the next decade. I don't think that we are going to be the end of corals. We need to act, we need to help them, but I don't think we will be the end of them. Coral are 500 million years old. 250 million years ago, they survived the Permian-Triassic extinction, otherwise known as the Great Dying. During this time, there was a methane coming straight out of the ocean floor. 96% of all marine life went extinct, wiped off the planet. But coral, instead of going extinct, said, I don't feel like doing that, and they looked around to see what their options were, and they took on a roommate. They formed a symbiosis with a little unicellular dinoflagellate, a little algae. And this algae, like other seaweeds and plants, photosynthesizes. They produce oxygen through photosynthesis. So coral formed a symbiosis with an organism that makes the oxygen for them. Evolutionarily brilliant. Well, when a bleaching event happens, what's actually happening is a breakdown of that symbiosis between the coral and the algae. Typically, it's when the water heats up, the sea surface temperatures rise, and the algae actually start to break down, which in turn breaks down the symbiosis. So algae have within their chlorophyll what's called a photosynthetic apparatus. 
And if you think of it like a funnel, it opens and closes in order to control the amount of light coming in. Well, when the water temperature increases, that apparatus gets stuck open. So it can't control the irradiance. There's too much light. The algae starts over photosynthesizing. They produce too much oxygen. They produce reactive oxygen species, which are like hydrogen peroxide. Damages our tissue, damages theirs too. So when this happens, they're hurting the coral. They're not benefiting the coral anymore. So the coral looks at the algae and says, it's not you, it's me, but this isn't working and you've got to go. And they evict them. They spit them out through their mouth. Well, when they evict that algae, the algae take a couple of things with them. They take up to 90% of the energy that that coral needs to survive, and they also take the color. Color on the reef is not from the coral. It's actually from those symbiotic algae and fluorescent and non-fluorescent protein. So when the algae are evicted, what you're left with is the clear tissue of the coral over the white calcium carbonate skeleton, hence the term bleaching. When the algae are evicted and they're in the water column, they do something amazing. They develop an eye spot and flagella so they can see and they can move. Why? Why on earth would these little organisms need to be able to see and move? Again, I wanted to know everything I possibly could. And what I learned was that there are other dinoflagellates that develop eye spots. And they use them to determine the directionality of light. They do this in order to maximize their photosynthetic efficiency. So I started thinking about it, and I thought, what is the brightest thing on a reef? It's the fluorescence, and specifically green fluorescence, because green fluorescent proteins are the most common fluorescent proteins on a reef. So I started thinking, what if that fluorescence is meant to attract algae? So I tested this theory, and I looked at a fluorescing coral, I excited their proteins, and I inoculated water with algae, and I watched. And sure enough, that algae swam right towards that green fluorescence. So what does this matter? What does it matter if coral can attract algae? Well, there are many different species of this algae. Some provide more protect protection than others. There is a phenomena called colorful bleaching. It's been witnessed fairly recently. It's absolutely beautiful. It's devastatingly beautiful. But what's happening is as the corals start to stress, they get very, very bright. Those fluorescent proteins upregulate that emission so that they're fluorescing more. And the thought is that it's a last ditch effort to protect themselves from over irradiance. Fluorescent proteins provide photoprotection. They provide a natural sunscreen. So it probably is a last ditch effort to protect themselves from the sun. But what if there's another function? What if they also glow to attract an algae? Because it's gonna benefit that coral to spit out an algae that's hurting it and attract and take up an algae that can potentially help it. The other thing that I found when looking at coral and fluorescence was that I'm told a completely different story from looking at a coral under natural light without special filters and looking at it while it's fluorescing. So this coral is held up to a Coral Watch health chart. These charts are mailed around the world for people to go underwater and hold them up to coral to see where they are on the bleaching scale. Because right now, we really don't know a bleaching is happening until it's actually happening. So I'm looking at this coral, it's about an E5. I'm not worried about it. This is a healthy, happy coral. I'm not worried. But then I look at it fluorescing and I'm told a completely different story. The bright green that you see is the healthy green fluorescence of the coral itself, and the red that you see is the red fluorescence of the algae. What I'm watching happen here is that algae traveling up through the tissues, because I shouldn't see that red. Before bleaching happens, the algae travel up, and then they get expelled. So this coral that I thought was healthy and happy I now know it's stressed, and it's probably getting ready to expel its algae. It's getting ready to bleach. So this provides me with an earlier warning sign that a coral is stressed, that it's in peril. 
So what does that matter? Why do I want to know sooner? Be depressed longer? I'm not going to lower CO2 emissions overnight, and I'm not going to lower the temperature of the water overnight. But what I can do is monitor that reef from the very beginning of the stress event to the end. I can see which coral are surviving, which coral are bleaching and then coming back and surviving, and which coral are bleaching and dying. Myself and many researchers around the world feel like the best way that we can help preserve coral reef systems is by replanting them. So we go out, we microfragment coral from the wild, we cut it into little pieces, we grow it in a nursery, we wait for it to get a certain size, and then we replant it on a reef system. Well, if you're just planting the same coral that are bleaching, you're probably not making as many strides as you could be. But if you've been watching that reef and you know which coral are hardiest, which ones are surviving, then you know that those are the corals you microfragment. Those are the corals you grow in the nurseries, and those are the corals that you replant on a wild reef system. Thank you.